Alright, hey YouTube. So, reporting straight from the man cave, I want to talk to you about some myths regarding casting uh, and more about myth busting because what we do here is a technological science based art and the art is what we have here, the touchy feely things. But the science is being able to replicate our results and trial and error which is fine in all its way, it's the base of science, but trial and error is useless if you cannot replicate and recreate your results. So some notes about temperature and sprues. The sprue is the overflow that happens on top of the mold and of course we cut it off and we put it back into a melt and that's something that's a, that's the first thing that people disagree about they want to put the sprue to the side because they don't want they don't want the melt affected by adding during casting time so they go down to the bottom and then they fill it with new lead and then they have to wait half an hour or something uh, and what happens then? Are you consistent? Do you get the same results from the new batch of lead? Do you get the same temperature um, on, on the first casting as you did on the last before emptying? Uh, do you get the same temperature and flow uh, with, with the pot filled up to here as if the pot is filled down to here? The short answer is no. So this is why I like to keep the pot full at all times. I have my PID um, temperature reg regulator uh, which ensures that I'm going to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that's pretty high uh, on some standards, some go even higher. Uh, but if I have 400 degrees then I know it's safe to put, in to put some lead into the pot. So, I add to the pot, if it goes down to 380, uh, then I know I need to stop. Uh, so I wait, not adding new, new either sprues or new lead. And I do this with, with uncleaned wheel weights. There's no problem. Everything uh, gathers to the top. Nothing goes down to a bottom pour uh, as long as you stir it. So that's the first thing about consistency. And the second thing is that if you have an inconsistent temperature, if you have variations in the mold temperature and the sprue knife temperature, then you won't get the same result. You will get bullets with different characteristics. So I'm going to, uh, it's hard to show you the characteristics, but I'll t tell you about them and you can Google pictures of it. Uh, I would say this is a perfect sprue cut. Uh, we have a bullet here that has, this is a 450 grain uh, 458 bullet. We have um, a base that it's, it's so flat it looks like it's been milled in a, in a machine. Uh, there's no nothing at the base that you can feel. No ridge, no uh, unevenness, nothing. Uh, you have a sharp edge at the base of the bullet and how is that possible? I'll get into that in a little while. This is the perfect bullet. There is no variation. Uh, no matter how the bullet spins it will have constant it will be consistent and have concentricity. Uh, however, it has wrinkles. And wrinkles, some people say, is an effect of uh, a too uh, cold mold or too, too cold uh, melt. Get back to that later. So we have a base with a perfect, uh, a bullet with a perfect base but we still have signs of too low temperature. So how can we get perfect fill out on the base but not on the rest? Here we have a frosted bullet. Frosting occurs when you have uh, a wheel weight type alloy uh, that crystallizes and this happens when you have 
the bullet inside the mold too long. Too long is a very uh, strange word to use, but but you still have it's it's an effect of having uh, the the bullet inside the mold for a certain period of time. On this bullet we have a slightly rounded base. I would say it's still fine. It's you have concentric concentricity. Uh, but it's slightly, slightly rounded. It's not as sharp as this one. I would still shoot and, uh, sh load and shoot this one. However, what you have here, uh, and I was just going back to, to the uh, crystallization, frosting is perfectly fine. It's usually a sign that you have perfect fill out up to everything inside the mold because you have such a high flow temperature that everything fills out. However, this mold has a crater in the middle from the sprue cut and the sprue cut tells us what has happened here. This bullet has been cut while the bullet is still too warm. The, the, there is something that um, you could say either the bullet is too warm or the sprue knife is too cold because there's an inconsistency between the temperature of the knife and the mold so the m sprue cut is the, the the sprue overflow is too cold and when you yak, yak uh, the knife over yank the knife over uh, it will rip some lead out of the base this is bad this is inconsistent the, ba the, the crater will never be the same size it will variate you will have uh, uh, unevenness because the, the, you, you can't have a perfect alignment of the sprue knife at all times so this is bad we don't want that this bullet on the other hand has perfect base sharp edges perfect fill out nothing bad about it except for the bullet base here the, the, the sprue cut is raised instead of a crater we have a small mountain. The opposite. And how does that happen? This happens when the bullet has gone cold inside the mold, but the sprue overflow is still hot enough so that when you cut the sprue, it will leave some lead here. This is also bad. This is inconsistent and it's a variation that will affect um, how uh, the rotation and uh, um, uh, gas uh, flow uh, outside the barrel at the muscle. So what what do we want? We want to have a sprue knife that is cold enough to allow a clean cut. We want the bullets to be cold enough for a clean cut on the base. And that looks like this. But we get back to this bullet. This has wrinkles. Why does it have wrinkles? If it has perfect ambient temperature, perfect temperatures to give a, a, a square base and a cut that is perfectly even, how can we have wrinkles? And that is due to airflow. So why is airflow important in a mold? Airflow goes through the ventilation channels. Most molds have uh, some kind of channel. The Lee molds have the absolute worst channels on the entire market because they take an easy way of just milling flat uh, with small, 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 small uh, ridges. Uh, and these ridges are, since the mold is in aluminum, aluminum, it's enough just to ding it or scratch it with something like cleaning it. Uh, and you have ruined that entire channel's ability of transporting air. So when the mold goes, when, when the melt uh, goes into goes into the mold, there's air inside. That air has to go somewhere. That air slips out on the side through the ventilation channels. If the ventilation channels are blocked either by lead or dirt or scratches, uh, the air will have nowhere to go. So the air will stay, it will cause a wrinkle. So you have a perfect fill out 
around the air. And then we complain that the air, uh, that the, the bullet is wrinkled and you, you say that it's because of too low temperature. That's not true. So, perfect uh, airflow. And if we don't have perfect airflow, how, how, if we have uh, insufficient ventilation channels, how can we adapt that? Well, if we pour straight into the mold, or if we pour onto the knife, we have different flow characteristics. So pouring straight down will get a higher fl flow of air escaping around the, the, um, around the lead that is poured in, around the beam. If we pour straight onto the knife, we'll have like a waterfall effect that blocks in the entire hole, and the air has to escape outside. If we have um, a mold that gives uh, another fault, like this. This mold has fins around the edge. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show it, demonstrate it by holding it like this. It has a fin on the base. This is the effect of a too high, air, uh, too high flow on the lead into the mold. So the, the, the lead will escape onto the top of the mold under the knife. And what do we do then? Well, then people say, just adjust the screw on the sprue knife. Okay, the battery of the phone died, so I had to put it on a charger. What, where was I? I was onto uh, the distance between the sprue knife and the mold. And if we have a distance here, people will uh, say there, uh, there will be enough for, for lead to come between. Uh, and that's not true, because the weight from the sprue knife itself is enough if the surfaces are cleaned and maybe we have some oil between uh, that will be enough so it's the pressure from the flow that gives the uh, lead the, the possibility to go between uh, the mold and the knife also people swear by temperature the wrinkles are the cause of temperature and uh, all evil in the world Crank your heat up on the pot and uh, go thousand degrees on, on your uh, Fahrenheit on your on your melt and everything will be fine. And that's nonsense. You want a medium temperature uh, so that you have good flow characteristics on on your melt. Uh, this mold is cold. You can see I'm holding it by hand. The knife is cold. And also I've unscrewed the, the sprue knife so you can see the gap here between. The weight of the sprue knife is the only thing that's holding it. And I'll show you, I'll demonstrate this with a correct pouring technique straight into uh, the hole, I will get perfect bases. The temperature of the knife makes the sprue overflow uh, harden or stiffen too fast. So we'll have to abuse the mold a bit while well, yacking it harder. And this is not how you want to treat the mold. You want it to release uh, or cut the sprue with just one or two wax. Uh, but this is for demonstration purposes. What do we have here? Perfect fill out. Ah, perfect fill out inside the mold on top and what do we have here as well we have no crater no raise or ridge we have a clean cut perfect base that will give extreme accuracy we have a square cut base this will go into the X field this will go into the 10 ring I will add these to my competition bullets because they are good enough so there you have it it's an art based on science go trial and error cut the crap on just raising the temperature feel it think it good luck